I deliver food for a Caribbean takeaway in the evenings. So uh, that's my view for the next five hours. I mean, I will go in the kitchen, but I just find it depressing being in there. Nobody here is happy. All the people that live in the flats up there, none of them are happy. People who work at the greengrocers next door, they're not happy. People who work at the bank, they're not happy. It makes me feel old. Three deliveries waiting, but let's take this one first. It's uh, not the best job in the world. It's certainly something at the age of 42 you don't want to end up doing. It's uh, a bit grim. Everybody I deliver to is stoned. All the places I deliver to reek of marijuana. Brighton is a terrible city to drive around in. And, uh, but it brings in a small amount of regular money, which makes all the difference. Numbers on the bin, lovely. Welcome to the sunny Caribbean. <laughs> 17.50 of your hard earned cheers. Cheers. Nice one, that's thanks yours. So Enjoy. Thank you oh, thanks very much. Cheers, thanks so much. Enjoy. Cheers. Thank you, bye. Another satisfied customer, but it's all in the delivery. <laughs> Usually, uh, that says Tommy Tickle, uh, but some kids pulled that off. And then it says East Sussex's 38 best children's entertainer. Uh, that was found in the street. Uh, the letters I got off a free cycle. Uh, I used to have a couple of uh, pig sack feed bags that I used to carry everything around in until I found this shopping trolley in the street, uh, which was a bonus. And then my mum made me this out of an old duvet. Um, what we've got in here is uh, clown trousers. Uh, what happened was that I'd got into uh, more financial difficulties after drawing the comic books. It wasn't paying. And there was a regular in the pub called Timmy Tickle, uh, who was a children's entertainer. And I always liked the fact that he worked weekends uh, but he was always in the pub, uh, shoving 30 quid at a time in the fruit machine. Uh, and he would always say to me, you're the biggest loudmouth idiot in here. Um, I was, I've always been able to hold court. Such a fantastic old phrase. And he, he came up to me one day and he said, uh, look, my wife doesn't like Brighton, so we're going to be moving out, going back to Essex. Uh, would you like to buy my kids act off me? Um, he said, I want a thousand quid. I want 500 up front and then I will take 10 deposits of 50 quid. I was never really fully happy with Timmy Tickle's act. The act, I did the first hundred parties with his act and it felt like wearing a dead man's suit, turning up at a, a really happy event. So then I thought, wait a minute, stick to what you know. What do I know? Working class, humour, um, just blag it, just blag it. So I created another character and completely rewrote the act and that's when it really clicked. Flat eight, that sounds like a top floor. It's always top floor. If there's a block of flats, more often than not, top floor. They never come back to me. 
I would like to see the, re the resuming of my previous career to this going much more full time. When I was a full time children's entertainer instead of being a part time children's entertainer. But at the same point, I want to do it in a different way where the audiences are much larger. Where I'm working here, you know, it's, it's all the ugliness. Where I, with the other job, it's, it's sweetness and light, you know? It's a complete juxtaposition. And it does make me appreciate the other job a hell of a lot more. I don't look like a children's entertainer. I don't sound like a children's entertainer. I have none of the characteristics of being a children's entertainer. Because apparently, people think I'm funny. <laughs> And that's definitely one prerequisite that a lot of other children's entertainers don't have. So it's very difficult not to fit in. Preparation usually is clean shirts, clean trousers, sort out some balloons, check me balloon pump, make sure that's all right. Lucky aftershave, wear a lipstick, false glasses, clean hat, clean wig, polish me whole. <laughs> Afternoon. So in 2008 you were in the documentary for the BBC, uh, could you explain what that experience was like for you? Sure, it was a fantastic experience. Um, I'd done some children's parties for people in Brighton and unbeknownst to me one of them was a, a documentary filmmaker, Daisy Asquith, and she was formulating an idea of what children's entertainment was in modern day and so she got in touch with a few of my friends as well Potty the Pirate, Mr Pumpkin, Magic Martin and Debbie and the Great Velcro and um, made a pretty successful documentary. They had the second largest uh, viewing of a documentary. It went absolutely, it, it went swimmingly. The public loved it, majority of the media loved it. Uh, it was a pick of the day in every single newspaper it was very well received. It's Daisy's favourite documentary that she's ever made. And she's made some good documentaries. Um, I don't know, in the Daily Mirror. Nice to get a full page in there, pick of the day. Um, the most normal and strangest of them all is the savagely funny Tommy Tickle. He would have been a great stand-up comic if he hadn't become a children's entertainer by mistake. Just, I've just said the C word while dressed as a clown, he gasps. I hope this isn't the last we've seen of you. You know, that was nice. Go and get your mummy. She's near your counsellor. There you go. There's always one. Seven parties a week. But um, the day after the documentary, I was receiving phone calls from other children's entertainers just ringing up saying, you're a right wanker, you are. You've brought the industry into disrepute. And then there's a guy called Terry Herbert who was uh, voted for eight out of ten years the best children's, favourite children's entertainer in the country. And he said, I personally put back children's entertainment a hundred years. So that was my biggest quote on the front page of my website for a while. Um, and of course, at the time the documentary was being made, I would not long had a son with, uh, with his mum and my partner at the time. What kind of dad are you? Uptight, aggressive, moody, lying, sanctimonious, wrong, male. I'm sure you've forgotten the future. Aggressive, have I done that? Yeah, he's moody. Yeah. What oh, about sanctimonious? Seeing the uh, video footage of how our relationship was, I just thought, man, what kind of relationship am I in? And so I just said, uh, in the January, late January, I said, look, it's not working, I'd like you to move out. So she moved out. Um, and then I got a phone call from a woman saying I'd like you to turn up for my 29th birthday party and uh, I eventually ended up marrying her and, um, and, and as soon as I got together with Lucy, um, Laura, my son's mum, um, shut off all contact with my son and made it very difficult for me. Um, I went through a period of not even seeing my son for eight months at all. It was just the grimmest of times. How did you cope when you were that sort of mentally low? Alcohol. I was a completely functioning alcoholic. So what was it that made you change your ways? Last Christmas. Just merely a month ago. Me and my wife travelled to her family in London. And uh, we got up there and I got steamed on a litre and a half of uh, whiskey. 
and I just, a litre and a half, something just snapped and I lost it with her brother in a discussion over comic books. And I lost it, I hit him and down with that loose. You know, I let her down, I let my best friend down. She's a strong woman, you know, but now I look back on it now, you know, you wouldn't want an asshole like me turning up and ruining someone's Christmas. My dad was a violent alcoholic. Christmas is when I was a kid, with broken noses being thrown downstairs. And I, all I did was I went up there and I gave someone a good old 1970s shit Christmas. And that's, I know exactly how they feel. Awful. And sometimes you just, sometimes something is broken. Got to leave it there a minute. Hat, got that hat. Tie, gotta look smart. Comb, got the charity shop. The squirty flower, which is around somewhere. It's probably fallen on the floor. Freeman R.D. Willis. I've had these now. These are the longest pair I've had. Because <laughs> they're about 15 inches. Got to have a rubber chicken. Hello? Fake egg. Essential. I, mean, I never had a children's entertainment when I was a kid. Didn't even have fucking birthdays. Uh, bear's egg. Um, and I actually do sometimes include this one as well, because I love bringing in my five-legged horse. <laughs> Brilliant, hang on. Yay. Rings, we'll have to wait and see. Hope it's chips, it's chips. We hope it's chips, it's chips. We hope it's chips, it's chips. Carling Black Label. There's this Italian lady, and she's lost her son, and she's saying, Where is my son? Where is my son? And he walks around the corner and says, Mamma mia. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like a pirate sword or a laser gun? Laser gun! What are you, a solicitor? Right, would you like a pirate sword or a laser gun? Do you call me a lazy bum? <laughs> I'm up here doing all the work, can you come up here and call me a lazy bum? Right, has everybody got a more picture shit? Right, when I stop the music, that's when you sit down. Ha ha ha! Now you're getting with it! Excellent. Yes! Yes! I'm going to make a few balloons. Yes! Well done, give yourself a nice round of applause there. That's for you, and I'm going to make another one here. Hi, oh, yeah, got some Caribbean food for you. Yeah, no, come on, first floor. First floor, okay. The future's bringing things about how to appreciate stuff and, and, and really make the most of them, which is something that I can honestly say I've never really done in the past. You know? Jeez, I'm getting old. Would you change it all if you could? No, I don't think I would. Because I know, I've, I've stopped thinking, I'd like their life, I'd like your life, I'd like that life. Because you don't know what they've got. They could have, you know, I've abused my body for decades and I've had a full medical and I have no ill effects from it whatsoever. I mean, that's incredible. Uh, I'm getting my brain sorted, my act's good. It's, it's just all coming together again. 
ready for the next big fall. <laughs> and it's a long way down. So yeah, so. Sorry. Did you get that?